Lantern Right. It's right around the corner, and by that I mean it comes out tomorrow, the day of recording. By the time this video is out, Lantern Right should have started, I believe. It should be Monday. And with Lantern Right, we've got a few rewards to pick and choose from. Now, I'm not going to go over the controversy of only getting free Interstellar Fate, which is uh, absolutely bonkers. can't believe they thought people would appreciate that, especially considering all of the good that Honkai Star Rail is providing. But uh, we're not going to talk about the controversy because everyone else has beat that dead horse. I'm going to be talking about which of these, I think it's 10, 10 characters from Liwa you should be picking. So let's begin. First on the list and the newest four star to be added into the game is Gaming or Garming. I'm not 100% sure how you pronounce his name. But the dude is a pyro claymore user and his main gimmick is pretty much just doing constant plunging attacks. So you'll see from his talents, it is pretty much just after gaming his use his bestial ascent to rise into the air. He will immediately use, he will use the especially powerful plunging attack charmed cloud strider instead. He will do a lovely high damaging plunging attack. And then his ult is pretty much just the same thing. He just gets to do his plunging attack more and more. And then he also regens health from plunging attacks. So gaming is essentially budget Zhao, which is great if you are like me and manage to pull Zhanyun, who basically went and said, hey Zhao, I'm going to buff you for the rest of the game. Don't worry, I've got your back. If you don't have Zhao, gaming, great alternative. From what I can see, gaming seems like a lot of fun, seems like a great option to have. He has a really strong Constellation 6 that I'm very much looking forward to, and it's most likely the option I'm going to pick. For most people, gaming is probably going to be the one you're going to want to pick if you've not, if you got unlucky on the banner, or if you're skipping Zhanyun and you want a new free character. Gaming is the most likely option for a lot of players, and I completely get it. Some people might not choose him because of his, because of him being a Claymore user, but I'll be honest, his Try him in the character trial. He's so much fun. I really like gaming. I'm I cannot wait to build him. He just he's very fun to play. Next up we have Yao Yao, and this is going to be a difficult one for me to talk about because I don't actually like Yao Yao, but I do recognize that she is very, very good as a dendro setter. She's very good at making sure that you have consistent blooms on the field, and is just a very strong consistent dendro unit compared to you know five stars like nahida he's not quite as good but if you are stuck with only someone like kole and dendro mc really good option to have on your team and i imagine for someone like nilu she might be really good unfortunately she's not a character i particularly like partly because i don't like that her alt you kind of have to stay on the field for it to keep working. Yeah, so as soon as she leaves the field, all of your little bunnies or Yugue disappear, which I don't love because I'm I'm very much a rotation-centered player. So she's not a character that I find particularly fun to play, but she is a very good Dendro setter. In terms of constellations, they all seem fairly decent. I again I, I don't play enough of Yao Yao to really know how good her constellations really are. But yeah, if you need a decent Dendro character, she's the only Dendro unit on the team. She's a solid Dendro setter. Pretty solid option if you need one. Next up, we have Genshin's favorite polearm user, Zhang Ling. Zhang Ling, unsurprisingly, very, very good. Zhang Ling, if you need someone to do insane off-field DPS with the pyro element, you found the perfect character because she snapshots, her ult lasts for between 8 and 10 seconds, I think, and her damage output is just phenomenal. Great, great overall raw DPS and reaction DPS. Zhang Ling is just everything that you'd want in a sub DPS. Great talents, although Goiva doesn't always aim perfectly and getting energy recharge from him can be a little bit painful, but her burst is so, so good. And then, of course, her talents are, you know, 
they're all pretty good, especially Constellation 4. And then Constellation 6 is also great. Her constellations are very good. So if for some reason you don't have Zhang Ling at something like 4 or 6 already, very good option to pick up. But Zhang Ling is one of those characters that has been out for a very long time. So I imagine a lot of players already have her to some degree at this level. But if you're a newer player and you don't have a lot of Zhang Ling or you somehow don't have Zhang Ling, definitely get Zhang Ling. She's uh, one of the best 4-star sub DPSs we've got. Next up on the list, we have Beido. Beido is one of my favorite four stars in this entire game for two reasons. One, her burst is pretty much just here. I'm going to bounce to as many targets as I can physically muster. Have fun. It ma She makes great electro charge teams. She makes an amazing overload team with someone like Yanfei. I absolutely adore, adore her burst. But then on top of that, we also have her skill, which is just a timing-based counter. If you counter when someone hits you, or even simpler, if you just stand on some grass that's on fire, you can press E, get max counter, smash them in the face for a bunch of damage, get a bunch of energy recharge back, and then you've pretty much got your burst back. And it's so satisfying to pull off. Beto is such a good character. She's very strong. She's not useful for everything, but in some niche teams... She's so incredibly fun to play. In terms of constellations, her C1 is pretty solid because you can get a shield from her. So you get you get the added bonus of having a shielder, which is nice. C2, the additional arc is really nice. And then C6 also reduces electro resistance of surrounding enemies. So more damage for her electro attacks. So overall, Beidou, very solid character. A little bit niche in some areas. But the character as a whole, very fun to play. Great Electro unit. Highly recommend. Jing Cho for this event is probably going to be the highlight. Partly because, I mean, mainly because the dude's getting a new outfit for free, which is lovely. I love that for him and for us as a player base. Jing Cho, unsurprisingly, one of, and still is, and will be for a very long time, one of the best sub DPSs in the game. And that's purely down to his burst. His burst is absolutely insane. Jing Cho walked so Yalan could run, essentially. Jing Cho's... Just kit is fantastic. His rain cutter does solid damage. Sorry, his rain screen does solid damage with his skill. A certain constellation, I think it also heals as well, which is lovely. Combine that with sacrificial sword. You do this twice, he has his burst. That's it, you're done. And you can switch out to another DPS. And then his rain cutter is literally just here. I'm going to smash you in the face with a bunch of hydro damage with almost no effort required. C1, very good. C2, also very good. Moderation, very helpful. This just increases the damage of his skill, which is, you know, it's fine, it's whatever, it's not a massive deal. And then of course C6, very, very good. Jing Cho is one of those characters where if for somehow you don't have him, get him. He's the best. He's one of the best four stars in the game outright. There's no competition. His only real competition is Zhang Ling. You don't have Zhang Ling get Zhang Ling. If you don't have Jing Cho, get Jing Cho. Other than that, everywhere else on this list is pretty much optional. Jing Cho, very solid. If you don't have some of his constellations, very much worth a pick. He's incredibly good and will be for a very, very long time. Ning Wong is going to be a hard one to evaluate because I am not... I'm a very recent adopter of Ning Wong and how she plays. At the beginning of the game, could not stand her. Her gameplay and her animations, her basic attacks are very clunky and they aren't smooth. And I found out the reason, I found it on a Reddit thread and it was pretty much the reason her skill, her charge attack doesn't feel as smooth as it should is that I think it only really follows on correctly when she does the animation from her left hand as opposed to her right if i remember correctly but when she does it on the opposite hand it doesn't come out smoothly so you can do one attack two attack and then charge attack depending on which hand it comes out it leaves it's meant to be fluid but if it comes out on the wrong hand it feels awful and clunky and loses all flow with her basic attacks and is not great that's only really gonna bother you if you're using her 
as a weird main DPS, which I did try for a little while, and then I found a different use for her, which is Navia. She is very useful with someone like Navia, who can use the na who can use the Geo bonus, plus with Jade Screen walking through it, your character gets a fifteen percent Geo damage buff. I love Lingguang specifically just for Navia. So if you have Navia, Ningguang very solid option. But yeah, Ningguang. I feel is one of those characters is again a little bit niche. Ningguang isn't one of those characters I think has a lot of potential compared to some of the others on this list. She is very fun in some niche instances and I've only recently started to enjoy her kit more but she does require a little bit of work to actually enjoy especially if you're going through the basic attack route. Obviously if you want to do you know basic attack Ningguang, her C1, very much necessary for it. The AoE damage is nice. Having the Jade Screen reset, very nice. Jade Screen is also quite convenient because it acts as like a physical shield on the battlefield rather than on your person. Not necessary in a lot of cases, but you know, it doesn't hurt to have. Jade Screen increases nearby characters' elemental resistance by 10%. Is You know, it's fine. And then when Star Shatter is used, Ningguang gains 7 Star Jades, which is literally just um her like homing missiles or whatever again Ningguang not a character I find a lot of use for most of the time but when I do she is a lot of fun to play if you can just sort of get over how quirky it is to learn her basic attacks to not be weirdly stunted next up on the list we have Chongyun and Chongyun is one of those characters who I think once upon a time got a, a lot of disrespect unnecessarily so um but I've always kind of really liked Chongyun, might be because he's a Claymore user, but he he allows for Ice Infusion, which off the top of my head, I can't think of anyone else that allows that with the exception of Ayaka, but that's only to herself. So he can enable a completely different team build, may not be the best in the world, but you know, the fact you can make it as a result of this one character, really nice to have, is Burst. It does some fairly decent damage. But the main thing that you're building him for, honestly, is just if you want someone on your team with Cryo Infusion. Unfortunately, it does only work for Sword Claymore and Polearm users. I would love for an Infusion character that allows for Bow users to change their Infusion. I think that'd be really unique. Get on that, Genshin. In terms of Constellations, I don't think any of them are particularly needed I mean this one's not too bad this one's not too terrible and then increasing overall damage isn't too terrible yeah I really like Chongyun he's a really fun character he's honestly not a character you're gonna get too much use out of I've not used him in quite some time the last time I used him was during Eula's rerun the first one we had in almost two years I don't get a lot of use out of Chongyun. I really enjoy using him when he's in the team. But again, he's not a character that I would particularly choose on this list. Unless I didn't have him for whatever reason. But yeah, that's Chongyun. Poor Jinyan. Jinyan, I think we all know how this is going to go. Jinyan is probably the easiest character to skip. Jinyan's one of those unfortunate characters that split scales. But she doesn't split scale very well. So for instance, if you want her to do damage. Uh, if you want her to have a really good shield, then you need to scale in defense but then of course if you want her to deal any actual damage you have to scale in something like attack and it's just not it's not ideal she's a fun character that's the one benefit to everyone on this list they're all fun in one way or another but Jin Yan, outside of being a dedicated shielder although some people once upon a time did make use of her as a charge attack unit it was a it was kind of a meme but it did kind of work outside of like a dedicated shielder i honestly don't see much use in jinyan that's the only reason i ever built jinyan was for a shielder and i still have not really gotten around to finishing using her for that purpose constellation one again is one of the reasons that her charge attack you know play style actually does kind of work you know she's got some decreasing physical resistance which is nice and then this is another reason why her charge attack actually works for a team comp it's weird she's a weird character she's not particularly great at anything yeah she's just fine but she you know 
if you fancy getting a getter, you can make use of pretty much every character in this game. There's no content you're really going to be locked out of. I'm sure there are players that have built Jinyan so good that they can take out 12 free abyss, 12 free abyss with very little effort. Every character can do pretty much all content in the game. But yeah, of of all of the characters on this list, Jinyan probably one of the least ones I would I would go for personally anyway. Yun Jin is another one of those characters that I have only recently really put much time and effort into. When she first came out, I didn't really care for her whatsoever. And then as time has gone on, I remember how good she actually is. And then I forget to use her for a while. Then she'll be really useful in another team. And then I realize, oh, wait a minute. You can be used for this purpose. So Yunjin is actually really, really good. I just constantly forget how good she actually is. So for instance, she can provide her own shield, which is which is fine. It's nice to have a shield creator on your team. Nowadays, not as necessary, I'd say, as they once were. We do have a lot more healing in the game. But, you know, to have an extra shield never hurts. But then her ult. Her ult is phenomenal. Her burst is fantastic. Now, her burst is mainly fantastic due to her consolation, if I'm not mistaken. If you don't have a C6 and you're one away from getting C6, her C6 is so, so very good. Because it just means whoever your main DPS is, and just your entire team in general, can be so much faster. Like, I'm currently working on a team where it's Yoimiya and Yunjin, and then a couple of other units. And obviously, Yoimiya already attacks pretty fast already. Combine this with that, you've got the added benefit of 12% attack speed. Then you also have, you know, stuff like C4, which increases her defense, which increases the benefit of the rest of her skills. And then C2, obviously, just straight up buffs normal attack damage. So again, someone like Yoimiya, it's perfect for. And then, of course, I just proceeded to ignore this for some reason. When she bursts, everyone will get the Flying Cloud Flag Formation. When normal attack damage is dealt to opponents, bonus damage will be dealt based on Yunjin's current defense. So you can build Yunjin as defensive and as, as tanky as possible, and then that means your entire squad will benefit from additional damage. Yunjin is a fantastic character, and if you do not have Yunjin, she is a very, very good option for you to pick up. If you have her at C1 and you want to move her to C2, very, very good option. If you have a C5 and she's almost C6, again, very, very good option to put onto C6. Last but not least, we have quite possibly my favorite four star in the entire game. Now, why is she my favorite four star? It is because her gameplay is some of the most straightforward and yet fluid example of combat in this game that I can describe. Yanfei's kit just excels off of itself perfectly and it requires almost no effort to figure out it is simply you do basic attacks she gets little seals around her body when she gets the maximum amount of seals which is free unless you're at c6 in which case it'll be four then you do charge attack you do charge attack massive explosion happens bunch of pyro damage happens you press e another massive another massive explosion happens you get all of your seals back you do charge attack and ma another massive explosion happens. Now you have your burst. You burst. Your seals come back. You charge attack again. And then you just rotate forever. Yanfei is so much fun to play. I adore playing as Yanfei. She is so much fun. If you don't have Yanfei, take a look at her gameplay. She is very satisfying to play. I'm a big fan of Yanfei. She pairs exceptionally well with someone like Beidou or Yelan or Zhang Qing, where she will just constantly do overloads or melts or vaporizes she's just so so much fun she is very squishy but she's very very fun or if you don't want her squishy you can actually build her as a tank because we do have tank fey constellation 4 gives her a pyro shield and there are numerous videos out there of people building yan fey as literally just a shielder and if that's what you want to do that you do that personally i don't think that's the best use of of Yanfei, but you can turn her into, into a tank if you so desire. And of course, her C6, if you're one-off C6, C6, massive improvement to the character. Everything about Yanfei just pairs into 
one another. A basic attack goes into her E, her E goes into a charge attack, and then at some point you're going to have her basic attack again. Uh, you're going to have her burst, use her burst, then you do charge attack, and then you do basic attack into the charge, and it's just, it's just constant. And it just constantly flows between one to the other to the other. And your only real struggle is having enough stamina to do it. And even that can be avoided by a fair amount by just having her C1. She's a very fun and enjoyable character. Now, she's not as strong as someone like Zhang Ling or Jing Cho, but in terms of enjoyment, she is a very, very fun catalyst unit. And on that basis alone, I would highly recommend. With all of those options though, who would I actually choose? As someone who has all of these characters already, if I hadn't have pulled for Zhang Yun, I 100% would have picked Gaming. He's the only character I wouldn't have had, so he is the one I would have picked up. So I think most people are going to go Gaming, which makes a lot of sense. If there are some characters you are missing, like if you don't have Zhang Ling, Beidou, Jing Cho, or Yun Jin, I would say those four are definitely your best options. Zhang Ling, credible pyro DPS. Beidou, great electro sub DPS. Zhang Cho, amazing hydro sub DPS. Yun Jin, phenomenal, phenomenal support. Absolutely exceptional. Same to Yao Yao as well. Yao Yao also seems to be a very good dendro setter. Personally, she's not my kind of playstyle, but she does seem to be very good. Characters I would probably avoid, probably Ningguang, Jinyan, Chongyun. Not massively necessary unless you really like the characters. Yanfei. Yanfei is a very fun main DPS with some pretty, pretty good numbers. But I do understand that she is not used a lot in places like Abyss and stuff. But if you don't have Yanfei or you have only like one or two constellations of Yanfei or... You've nearly finished Yanfei's Constellations. She is a great option. She's so much fun. Highly recommend if you want a fun Catalyst unit to play. And then, of course, Gaming is brand new and he is his own thing. I can't really speak on his power, but from what I've played, he's really fun to play. So he's kind of in the same camp as Yanfei at the minute, where he is just a really fun character to play. So, yeah. Those are your best options. There's no real hard and fast rule. I think most people are just going to go for whichever character they don't currently own, which for most people is probably going to be someone like gaming, which makes perfect sense. There are your options. There's a brief rundown of who you should probably try and pick. But honestly, whoever you think is going to be the most fun is the easiest and safest option for you. Because at the end of the day, you're going to have to play the character one way or another. So pick who you think will be the most fun. Or will improve a character that you already have that is really good and elevates them even more. For instance, someone like Zhang Ling, who just gets really good constellations again and again. Anyway, with that, this video must come to an end. Thank you for those that suck around to the end. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe and all of that good stuff. Let me know down in the comments below who you're going to pick. I think for me, it's probably going to be gaming. Just because I really want to get him closer to Max Constellation. I really want him at C6. And also partly because I have pretty much C6 everyone else on this list, except I think Yao Yao. But um, yeah, let me know down in the comments. I'd love to know. With that though, I've been James, the mayor of Jamestown. And until next time, goodbye.